Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna have a look at the throttle position sensors diagnostic on this Ford. So we have a Ford Fiesta here, and this is the throttle body located right here. You may have some problems on throttle position sensors that causes limited engine RPM. It's gonna bring up some fault code for you as well. In this video, we're gonna have a look at the sensor wiring diagram first because inside this throttle body we have two sensors we're going to have a look at the wiring diagram to identify the internal structure then we will get back here to identify all these wires one by one to see which wire is which because we need that before starting to do any diagnostic we will check the sensors operation with scan tool this part is going to be helpful for those friends who have scan tool and after that, we're going to get back here again to check the sensors with multimeter. And this part is going to be helpful for those friends who don't have any scan tool. All right, before starting the video, if you haven't subscribed the channel yet, please don't forget to subscribe. And we also have some online courses on udemy.com where you can learn more and you can get the certificate of completion as well. You can find the link to our online courses in this video's description first of all let's have a look at the wiring diagram right now you see the wiring diagram for electronic throttle control exactly for this car as you see we have six wires on this throttle body so between these six wires two of them are for throttle body actuator that you see up here and the other four are for throttle position sensors Inside this throttle body, we have actually two throttle position sensors. We have TPS1 and TPS2. So we are using two sensors because ECM can use the signal from each sensor to validate the other one. And just in case if one of them fails, the other one is going to work as a backup. But generally, if both throttle position sensors fail, ECM will go to the limb home mode, which is going to limit your engine RPM. So if we focus on the sensors, as you see, on the sensors, we have one voltage reference, which is for both sensors on pin number six. And pin number two is actually the return line for the throttle position sensors. So we have one common positive and one common negative. And because we have one common positive and negative on both sensors, if each one of those goes faulty you will have engine limited rpm because both sensors are not going to work anymore but signals of course must be separate we have tps1 output signal right here and tps2 output signal right here on pin number four so generally these sensors are potentiometers so it means when you are pressing the gas pedal, you're sending the information to engine control module. Then engine control module is going to activate the throttle body actuator. And when throttle body actuator is opening the throttle body, ECM looks at TPS1 and TPS2 output signal. And because they are potentiometers, when throttle body opening, the resistance value in each one of these sensors will change. By having different value on resistance, of course, we will have different output voltage. But there is something important regarding these two sensors. Even if these two sensors are receiving same ground and power, they provide different output signals. So it means when you are not pressing the gas pedal when throttle body is closed, TPS1 should provide low voltage and TPS2 will provide high voltage for you. When I say high voltage is something a little over four volts and low voltage is less than one volt. But as soon as you press the gas pedal, because throttle body is opening and the resistance value of each sensor is changing, of course the output voltage is gonna change as well. But this change is just like this, that on TPS1, the output voltage is gonna increase. On TPS2, the output voltage will decrease. But all the time, if you look at the live data, you see that these two values are inversely proportionate. So it means, if you add the TPS1 and TPS2, when throttle body is closed, you will reach to something close to five. If you press the gas pedal and throttle body opens, these two are still proportionate. They will give you something close to five because 
in one of them voltage is dropping in the other one is increasing at the same time they're going to give you again five volts so this is how you can come to a conclusion if these two are giving you proper value or not and of course we can read this on a scan tool and we can check it with multimeter as well okay right now you see the throttle body connector on the right side of the screen and wiring diagram on the left i'm going to disconnect this if we look at the wires from number one if i hold it like this pin number one is that green orange wire which is the output signal for tps1 this is pin number one this green orange wire this one pin number two is blue white wire which is actually the ground for both sensors this one is blue and white as you see pin number three is for throttle body actuator which is that blue orange wire so this one is blue with these orange strips as you see that pin number four is brown yellow wire which is the output signal for tps2 this brown yellow wire as you see it's brown with yellow strips pin number five that yellow wire just right here this pure yellow is for throttle body actuator again and pin number six is the power supply for both sensors which is going to be like here so right now that we identify all the wires everything is going to be easy to check the sensors all right let's start checking the throttle position sensors with the scan tool as you see i have connected my scan tool right now so we're going to select engine After a scan tool connected to the engine, let's go for reading data stream. And right here, you can scroll down to find throttle position sensor voltage, sensor one and sensor two. All right. So right now, this one shows the throttle body opening angle, ignition switch is on. I'm not pressing the gas pedal right now. This is the voltage from TPS one, and this is the voltage from TPS two. As I explained earlier, these two sensors are inversely proportionate. So it means TPS1 voltage right now is low, TPS2 voltage is high. But if I press the gas pedal, what's going to happen? Output signal of TPS1 is going to increase, but output voltage of TPS2 should decrease. But proportion between these two is just like this. This is what I've seen on many cars that if you consider the TPS1 and TPS2 values, if you add up the value from TPS1 to TPS2, you're going to have something close to 5 volts because sensor is getting 5 volts. TPS2 value and TPS1 value together is going to give you something close to 5 volts. Right now, as you see, it's just like that. But if you press the gas pedal, you should have increasing value here and decreasing value in here. If I press the gas pedal, you see the voltage in TPS1 is increasing, in TPS2 is dropping. It's the same as story all the time. That proportion that I explained is going to be the same as story all the time. Doesn't really matter how far you are pressing the gas pedal. The proportion between these two is going to be like this. If you add them up, you're going to reach to something close to 5. When we are reading the values with the scan tool, we want to make sure each one of these sensors is giving us exactly what we are after regarding the output signal. And when we press the gas pedal, they change according to the specification, increasing and decreasing. Of course, this part is very helpful for you to diagnose the throttle position sensor if you have a scan tool. But you need to remember something that what we are reading right now, of course, we are reading the sensor's output signal, but the scan tool is reading the value from engine control module it means sometimes you have incorrect value in here on tps1 or on tps2 or both but having bad value here doesn't necessarily mean that throttle position sensor is bad all right because we are reading this value from ecm of course we have the throttle position sensors we have the wiring and we have the ecm itself so it means any of these three sections can be faulty so if you have good value right here that's all right there's nothing wrong with the system but if you have bad value 
you need to grab the multimeter and check the throttle position sensors on the throttle body because we want to make sure if throttle body is faulty or if it is from the wiring let's go for checking everything on the throttle body with multimeter so the first thing that i can check on throttle position sensors is the power supply so if power supply is not provided your sensors is not going to work they're not going to generate any signal because they don't have any voltage as i said on the connector this yellow violet wire is the voltage reference so if i back probe it right now so i can read the sensor supplies right now on that wire on the multimeter i put the red probe on here and black one on a good ground so as you see sensors are getting 5 volt input which is okay this is exactly what ECM provides the sensors so so far everything is good if this 5 volt is not provided both sensors are gonna fail and you need to chase this wiring back from here to the ECM because ECM is the one providing this 5 volt so right now that we have the power supply provided we can go for checking the output signal on each sensor so i can disconnect this one to back probe it properly tps output signal is on this pin number one and tps2 output signal is on pin number four this brown yellow wire just right here i connect the connected back so let's go for checking them one by one so as you remember what we did with the scan tool on TPS1, the voltage value was low when throttle body was closed. On TPS2, voltage value was high, a little over 4 volts. So we are trying to check it right now here on the throttle body. Let's check TPS1 signal. So as you see, exactly like the scan tool, we are getting 0 0.8 volt on TPS1. And if I check TPS2 right now, I'm getting exactly 4.2. As I mentioned, if we add up these two values, we're going to reach to 5 volts, exactly like the scan tool. So we are getting 4.2 here from throttle position sensor 2. So this confirms that the sensors are working properly. So the reason that we need to check the sensors with the multimeter is because first because sometimes we don't have any scan tool we have to use the multimeter so we need to find the wires and we need to do it just like what i did and the other one is even if you check the values with the scan tool because as i mentioned your reading is from the ecm and if the values are bad you want to make sure if the throttle body is bad or the wiring or ecm itself right so right now we are checking everything on the throttle position sensor so it means in case of having any fault if you are reading bad value on the scan tool you get in here you check everything on the throttle body like what i did if you get incorrect signal here as well if you get bad signal it means throttle position sensor is bad and you need to change the throttle body but if you check everything here and you see that the output signals here they are all okay it means there is nothing wrong with your throttle body. You need to go for checking the wiring first. Of course, we are getting good value. It means the power and grounds are provided. Problem could be the wiring on signal wires between here and ECM. So you need to check the wiring between here to ECM to find the problem. It could be the connector on the ECM. It could be the wiring between this one and ECM, or it could be ECM itself. But we try to go step by step because most of the time problem is from the throttle body or wiring so we need to go step by step to find the main cause okay everyone thank you very much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed the video please don't forget to subscribe the channel for getting the notification when we upload new videos